they say, okay, well, let's take a look at your life. Like, okay, you got a bunch of problems, and they're like massive dragons, and you're just like, you're not going anywhere with those problems. You're just cowering in the corner. And what the behavior therapist does is cut them, cut that dragon into those little dwarfs, until the dwarfs are small enough so that you can really kick the hell out of them. And so, and that, by the way they do that is they, they take the problem and they decompose it into elements that are small enough that you have a reasonable probability of mastering them. So you take the problem apart into, into its micro problems, careful, careful analytic process. And then you think, okay, well, how could we progress a little bit this week? And some of that is to face, to practice facing things you're afraid of. So like if you're agoraphobic and you can't get on an elevator, you can't get on a taxi, and you can't stand up to your husband, and I'm saying husband because most agoraphobics are women, most of them are middle-aged women, and most of them were too dependent for most of their life. So that's a monster. It's like society, husband, elevator, taxi, subway. It's a monster, and it's that place you will not go. And that's because you feel this high, and everything else looks this big. And so, and partly that's because you've run away, and when you run away from something, it grows and chases you, which is, well, it's exactly what happens to a prey animal, man. And so, and this is what behavior therapists do. They decompose your problems. What are you afraid of? Well, okay, you're afraid of everything. Well, let's get something specific you're afraid of. Well, I'm afraid of an elevator. Okay, an elevator. So I have a client, she's afraid of elevators. The elevator door opens, she goes, that's a tomb. And I thought, oh. Wow, I thought it was an elevator, but for you, it's not a bloody elevator, it's death. And so that's what you're afraid of. It's worse than that, you're afraid of being trapped inside there in the dark, alone. Alone, not knowing if anyone is going to rescue you, stuck there with your damn imagination, freaking out. It's like, and if that's not, and then maybe you have a heart attack because you're so terrified and you die. It's like, you know, so that's the elevator. Well, it's no bloody wonder that no one's going to get into something like that. And then maybe underneath that is your distrust in the mechanisms of society, right? Because, you know, a normal person, those weird creatures, they'll get an elevator, what the hell, they don't care. And partly it's because they have an implicit belief, even if the thing stops, somebody will come along and rescue them. And usually you don't even think about it, right? It's like, oh, what the hell, it's an elevator. It's like, the danger is invisible to you. And it's partly because you implicitly trust the structure. And so maybe you go into the unconscious presuppositions of the person who is terrified of the elevator and the subways, and you find out they have a real problem with trusting authority. And that's partly why they don't get along with their husband, and why they've never been able to stand up for themselves. And so then you say, okay, well, you're afraid of the damn elevator, but it's not an elevator, it's a tomb. And the tomb is partly you, and partly it's partly the elevator, and partly your unconscious mind. And so, well, what can you handle? Can you go and look at an elevator from 10 feet away? It's like, yes, okay. How about nine feet away? Yes, five feet, yes, four feet, no. Okay, no problem, four and a half feet. We're gonna go from that elevator. And we're gonna look at the damn thing until you're bored of it. Because that's what we're trying to, you should be bored of the elevator. Because then you're not afraid of it, obviously. It's like, it's an elevator. You just don't notice it, right? All these things around here that you don't notice, I'd take you out of here and ask you what color the walls are. You haven't got any idea. You know, I, I suspect for most of you, there's not a chance you'd be able to identify the gender of the person who's sitting next to you, unless you know them. It's like, you just don't remember anything. And why should you? Everything works. Like, you don't have to pay attention to it. It's like, is that staying up? Yeah, it's still up. Yeah, it's still up. <laughs> still up. And it's like, really? No. No, you get bored of that real quick, and so then you just ignore it. And, but the agoraphobic has had that veil of ignorance torn away, and what they see behind it is mortal threat. And so that's really what you're helping them deal with. And So, this week they're four and a half feet from the elevator, next week they're a foot from the elevator, and the week after that, the horrible gates of hell open, and they look inside, and they don't run. And so, 